Okay, Ball here from Zurb, and we are going to talk about the JavaScript utility library. So with Foundation 6, we packaged up a bunch of the utilities that we were using internally over and over again, and made them usable for not only our internal components, but also such that you could use them for anything in your app or your own uh, components if you want to create your own Foundation components. So let's go through really quick what we have available here. Uh, so first off is the box utility. Box utility is uh, wrapping up a couple different things. So the first major thing that it does is wrap up the dimensions of any particular element. Um, and it not only gets height and width, but also checks for offset, top, parent dimensions, things like that. So it kind of wraps around a whole bunch of different browser um, built-in functionality for finding positioning and gives you a standardized interface to get it all at once um, and use it for positioning. Uh, it also has a fun function called I'm not touching you, which lets you compare an element to either its parent or the window and see if it's going to cause some sort of collision or overflow. We use this all the time for positioning elements like drop downs and uh, all, anything that's getting positioned automatically, tooltips, that type of thing, uh, to make sure that it's not going to change the scrolling in your window or overflow or cause other conditions. So uh, this can be super helpful when you're positioning something absolutely and you want to understand, is this thing going to overflow my window or not? Next up is the keyboard utility. Uh, the keyboard utility is a uh, wrapper around um, sort of keyboard event handling and things like that. So it lets us standardize the accessibility mm -hmm. for all of our components. All of the JavaScript enabled foundation components are keyboard navigatable out of the box. And they all flow through this keyboard utility so that it's super easy and simple to do so. A uh, couple different utilities. One is letting you trap and release focus. So for example, if you're inside of a modal, you want to trap the focus inside of that modal until that modal is closed. Um, other types of things. You can also register a whole set of handle key functions uh, that let you just kind of uh, manage your keyboard inputs in a uh, reliable, consistent manner. So anytime you are building keyboard navigation for your site that is uh, beyond, above and beyond what is uh, going to happen by default from the browser. I uh, highly recommend taking a look at the keyboard utility to do so. Moving forward, the media query utility uh, is what we use to make our JavaScript as responsive as our SAS styling. So with your SAS stylings, you've got media queries that work uh, pretty naturally. The browser already understands them uh, when your uh, your know, screen is different sizes, different parts of your styles will be applied, um, and it actually changes on um, resize and things like that. Media Query lets us bring that into the JavaScript. So there's a lot of components that you might want their behavior to vary based on screen size. One good example is sticky. Uh, it's a very common pattern for desktops to have a sticky navigation of some sort. Um, on our docs, we have this sticky right navigation here uh, that you're seeing. You don't necessarily want that to happen on smaller screens. I mean, this navigation here, that's a lot of screen real estate. And if I had that on my phone and it was stuck there, I would never room for anything else. Uh, so by default, sticky is actually sticky on medium sizes or higher. Uh, there's an attribute that you can use to influence that. Um, you can say sticky on large, sticky on small. Uh, but what that does is basically let you apply the same mobile first thinking that you do with your SaaS in your JavaScript and for JavaScript components. And those all lean on this media query utility. So it lets you do things like media query at least some particular size, you know, have some sort of behavior based on it. it lets you see the range of uh, named media queries that Foundation is using. It lets you see the current uh, breakpoint. Where are we at right now? Um, and it lets you get back the pixel values and strings if you absolutely need them. Next utility that we're going to cover quickly is the motion utility. Wraps up two handy dandy little functions. Uh, so one is the motion wrapper, uh, which is basically a way to manipulate CSS animations. The motion UI library is a whole bunch of powerful CSS animations. This lets you apply them programmatically with JavaScript. So if you've checked out on uh, some of the other examples, and we can include a link to, for example, Toggler with uh, motion UI. You can automatically trigger things to happen with Motion UI. That all leans on this foundation motion uh, utility. And if you want to build things with triggering 
uh, motion UI animations with your JavaScript, I highly recommend using the motion utility for that. Uh, move is more of a backwards compatibility thing. Um, it lets you use the request animation frame uh, method even back to IE9. So that lets us do uh, custom animations for all of our browsers, not just uh, those that support request animation frame. Uh, these days, if you're supporting all modern browsers, if you're in you know, flex mode and you're happy with more uh, advanced browsers only, you can get away without this. But if you need to support back to IE9, this gives you a way to do that if you need to. Continuing on down the page, we have some fun timer and image loading utilities that let you wait until all of your images are loaded to do things, um, particularly used by Orbit, but you can use it other places as well. If you need to wait until all your images are loaded to show something, that sort of thing. We include some touch extensions uh, using the touch utility. Uh, this is how we you know, add swipe handling and things like that. And we have our own event triggers library. This lets us do things with uh, data open, close, and toggle, if you're familiar with those. Uh, we can link you to, again, the toggle utility. This is super handy here, but we use this all over the place. Um, this lets us trigger events other places in the page uh, simply by adding data attributes. Um, and if you use a data open or data close or data toggle without an ID, so it's not pointing to a particular thing to open or close, it will actually bubble up to whatever parent container it has that is openable or closable. Um, you can actually mark things as closable, and then you can close them no matter what they are, um, you know, whether it's something that Foundation can close by default or not, just by adding data closable. Um, you can animate those with Motion UI, and it understands default. So this makes it super easy to do simple interactions on the page without having to write your own JavaScript. We also have some global triggers involved. Uh, data scroll, data resize, wrap up a, do a global handler on the window so that you don't have to have every component independently adding and removing its own event handlers. Um, and then we will trigger on this event uh, when the page scrolls, is, when the page resizes. So this makes it really easy for having every component that needs to understand when the page resizes, listen for that without having the overhead of adding multiple window level resize handlers, things like that. So you can tap into that as well. 